so hi everyone this is Fiona thanks for being here and taking your time out of your busy schedule uh, my name is Fiona and my talk is on Phoenix a federated generative diffusion model this is a work done by me and my professor Dr. Afram Ashadi during my time at the University of Washington so before we dive right into uh, diffusion models and its federated learning uh, scenario, I just want to take a few steps back and talk a little bit about what exactly are diffusion models. Uh, so diffusion models are, as you know, a really important class of generator models. What makes them really different from GANs or VAEs is that they are probabilistic in nature. So what happens here is that uh, the difference in between them and GANs is that these models essentially try to convert pure noise that usually arises from Gaussian distribution into something that is of a high quality data by its two-step approach. So it consists of a two-step process wherein there is a forward diffusion process where the data is slowly added with noise, typically Gaussian noise, till you have just a pure isotropic Gaussian data distribution. And then you have a, res res oh, sorry, a reverse diffusion process where you employ a neural network to estimate this noise and try to remove this noise thereby getting the same data itself or different variations of the image that you see on your right. So let's say you were to take an image of a bunch of vegetables or something and you try to add noise to this image and try to denoise it, you would get a lot of different variations and that's how diffusion models work. So our motivation for uh, introducing FL into diffusion model is that diffusion model produces high quality data samples and they have really good mode coverage. They also don't suffer from any of the instability or convergence issues that you typically see in GANs. This makes them like a really good candidate and adding this on top of FL, you know, you can do on-device data, your data never has to leave the clients. There is also a lot of security and privacy by having data in the client itself. And this enables collaboration from multiple institutions like medical facilities or financial firms or different manufacturing industries as well. Although it seems pretty straightforward, like, you know, why not just use diffusion models and federated learning? It's gonna work, right? But not really. There's a lot of challenges that go along with it. First, it introduces the issue of non-IID data wherein the data distribution is always different across different clients as that can compromise the model performance. There's also redundant clients in FL and that can sometimes drastically drop the global model performance and can cause divergence rather than convergence of the model itself. It's also difficult to estimate the diversity of the generated samples. So we introduced Phoenix and we implement two new strategies of how we could tackle these challenges. The first um, interesting strategy is what I call the data sharing strategy. So what happens here is that it's, it's a bunch of steps. So I can go and explain how that actually works. The first step is that you isolate a small portion of your data, which acts as the global shared data, which is your capital G. And you do a global diffusion model training, which usually happens on the cloud. So once you have a global model diffusion, you then share a small portion of this, which is given by the parameter of alpha, you share them to all the different clients. And this is when the actual process of federated learning starts and the clients learn this small amount of data along with its own local data. It trains the local diffusion model, shares the weights and the parameters back to the global model, and then it aggregates using different aggregation strategies like averaging, and then it sends it back to the clients and this goes on and on and on. Till you have like a really good model that has reached its convergence. And the best part of using this strategy is that it ensures representation of the, all the classes. When I say all classes, I'm referring to say, let's say I'm gonna take a data set, which is so far 10. And when I say it, it ensures equal representation, it means that the model is effectively able to generate classes from all the different 10 classes, you know, the car, the bus, the trucks, et cetera. The second strategy is a little different and it is a two-step approach where you have personalization and threshold filtering. Personalization, just like in any other ML algorithm, you add customization to the different models. So in this case, the client data, I'm sorry, the different clients have their own unique model, which is not the same. And by for doing this, we kind of modify the last basic blocks of the unit model 
so that they have the same basic layers in the front and in the end they have their own personalized layers. So once the different client devices are trained with their own personalized model, we generate samples from these different uh, devices and we monitor their performance. So we can monitor performance with the help of different metrics like the FID score, the IS score, the precision and recall. Once we monitor the performance, we keep looking at the clients that are always underperforming. We usually look at them for like two or three times. And if they're consequently underperforming, we aim to disconnect such clients. So why do we do this? So the reason is because some of these clients can always end up dragging down the global model performance or end up diverging them. And that can usually take up a long time, which is a waste of you know, useful time, which can go on in training other useful data. And this ends up making our model really robust. And, uh, and this also ensures that there's equal representation of all the classes because the other devices are still going to have good amount of data. The results from the first uh, strategy that I mentioned, which is the data sharing strategy, uh, there's a lot of different graphs here, which we can go in detail. The first graph, which is the precision and recall versus beta. This indicates that uh, how, how well the model is performing when I keep varying the amount of global data that I share with my clients. And as expected, when I keep sharing more and more of data with the different clients, the performance is also improving. And the same is a similar scenario you can see when I do FID and inception so, uh, score versus the beta. The third graph is one wherein I pick the best version of beta, which is beta 25. And around the same experiment by varying the amount of local data, which is alpha. And you can see that it doesn't really vary much and the performance is pretty constant. The fourth graph is an interesting one, which shows the distribution of the different generated sample classes. So consider the x-axis to be the different classes of the CIFAR 10 data set and y-axis to be the number of samples. An ideal scenario, if you were to say generate 10,000 images, is that we wanted 1,000 images from every class. But that's not going to be happening in an ideal world when you try to run an inference on a diffusion model. So we try to at least bring it as close as possible to this horizontal line, and we show that the data sharing strategy tries to at least bridge the gap and is not as worse as the blue line which you see, which is the default training mode. The next are the results for the personalization and threshold filtering. Uh, very similarly, you have the same distribution of generated samples, and they are also a lot better than our default training mode, but it's not as great as that of the previous results. One uh, indicator for this is because that when you do the two-strike approach to filter clients, sometimes you run into an issue where you might end up filtering clients, which were the only clients to even have that sort of class. And by eliminating them, you end up decreasing the distribution of such classes. Although the performance is much better than that of the uh, default training mode, it is still significantly lower than that of the data sharing strategy. And an interesting thing here is we tried different approaches on how we do the two-strike approach. So one is we tried to get rid of clients which had the lowest precision. We tried to get rid of clients which had a threshold of precision below 0.7, and we also kept a threshold of 0.6 to eliminate our clients. So putting all of these experiments together, we can say that Phoenix definitely outperforms the default training mode. And by just sharing four to five percent of the global data in the first round, like I mentioned, it significantly improves the performance. And it also takes care of the class imbalance issue or the non-IID issue. However, there is a downside to these experiments in, a, in the point that they're highly computational heavy. Uh, in, in other words, like, you know, the DC GAN, which is your state-of-the-art uh, GAN models, have just 6.2 million parameters. But the same DDPM model has six times the amount of parameters. And because of that, the time taken to train is also significantly more. So what can we take away from this is that what are, you know, there's a lot of opportunities for uh, using diffusion models that can be trained in a federated learning setting. There's uh, enough venues to explore in the form of better understanding the evaluation metrics. There's still not a lot of robust metrics to better perform or you know better me measure how good these generated samples are and how is the mode coverage. 
There could also be a lot of extensive research to go on in encrypted data in FL or differential privacy. We could also see a lot about how can we reduce the time taken for inference by performing uh, different experiments on quantization or pruning to make sure that these models can run on really small edge devices. And I also think that looking at places like intellectual property rights and things like that could also help us better shape and design and you know, deploy better uh, models when we try to you know, use diffusion models using federated learning. Thank you. And with that, I'm open for questions.